basically raised in the churches. You know, my cousins are pastors in the churches. So my grandmother, she used to take me to Sunday school. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. I'm joined with Rebecca. We've been trying to book for a while, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes. I'm actually really excited to have you. And you're a convert to Islam, but you're also a specialist in holistic healing. Which, yes. um Can you tell us a little bit about that quickly? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So for myself, I'm a revert. Alhamdulillah, I reverted 10 years. We'll definitely get more into that as well. And I come from a registered nursing background. So throughout my nursing career, I noticed people are getting just so sick and the medical system just isn't able to provide life-sustaining, lifelong solutions. So that's why I came online. I have literally, I've done about eight years of nursing education. I've done a holistic health course. I'm a manual lymphatic drainage therapist as well. So I very much believe in like that holistic approach to care. It is so critical. It is so needed in today's society. And we can definitely delve more into that as well throughout our conversation. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me today. No, thank you. Actually, you messaged me. No, you didn't message me. You have you tagged me on something on Instagram. Yes. And that's how I like got to know you, saying that like, you said my story or something. And I was I was so happy to to be tagged on Instagram by you. Michelle. Yeah, well, it's it's true. I mean, I watched you from when, you know, the early stages of your revert process. And it was very inspiring to me and very motivational. And I always wanted to be able to come onto the online world and really just share my story, share my experiences. And you very much motivated me to do that. So that's why I tagged you in the post. Because like, and for me too, on my Instagram, I have a little section of revert. So I just keep kind of adding, you know, new posts and when I saw you come up I was like oh I definitely have to tag you <laughs> <laughs> thank you honestly that means the world to me it's um you know a lot of our work is sitting in our bedrooms or whatever sitting in our houses talking to a phone or whatever you yes. don't really like realize who's the other end of it and it's so nice to sort of have that feedback of oh I watched your thing or I found it inspiring and it's really nice to hear it yeah, no, you're right. It's so true, right? Like you come and you talk to a camera, right? But you don't know who it's going to impact or who it's going to reach at that time. And mashallah, you've definitely made a positive impact in the sure. Islamic community, mashallah. That's a given. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. May Allah reward you, you know, for your intentions for everything. Thank you so much. That's you're so welcome. Sweet. Okay, so you're a reader for 10 years, mashallah. So <laughs> let's start with the obvious. Were you religious before you became Muslim? Yes, I was. I was very religious. I was Christian. I was basically raised in the churches. You know, my cousins are pastors in the churches. Oh, so my grandmother, she used to take me to Sunday school. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were pastors. Um, my one cousin, he's, he travels around Canada like he literally is booked by some of the biggest churches because he's so popular and he's done missionary over in Africa. And yeah, so I come from very much like my mom's side of the family, very religious, my dad's side, not really so much. They're kind of like the opposite spectrum, right? But within my mom's side, yeah, my grandma took me to church. I mean, every Sunday until I was eight. My grandmother very much raised me in a lot of ways too when I was younger because my mom was a single mom and she worked full time. So bedtime, my bedtime stories were the Bible. But I remember we would like be reading through the pages and it would take us so long to get through it because like all the time we'd be like, okay, grandma, what's that mean? Okay, grandma, hold on, what's that mean? Grandma, this is confusing, <laughs> right? Because the Bible you take, you can take a lot of messages from it. But I found in Sunday school, the way they explained the prophet's stories were a lot more easy to understand than the Bible. And I even found that growing up as well in my teenage years, my young adult years, is it's just very hard to follow. I don't know if you noticed the same, um, you know, your beliefs before Islam. Yeah, so I um, I didn't have any kind of like Christian upbringing. Yeah. Um, there wasn't really religion in my family. Yeah, I remember hearing that mm. in your video, yes. Yeah, so I never really read the Bible. And I think even a lot of people who call themselves Christians haven't really read the Bible. No, it's hard to understand. It's it's really hard to follow. I mean, and you know, when you when you go to the churches as well, depending on what church you go to, the sermons can be very like dry and very boring, right? And I found that too, because I went to Catholic churches. I wanted to experience kind of everything when I was younger. And 
I found that it was just, it was very hard to follow the priest and it was very dry and it, it really, it didn't resonate, you know, with, with my heart personally. So yeah, so yeah. I was basically, you know, Christian throughout my whole entire, you know, childhood, in my young teenage years, in my early adult years as well. And though at the age of like eight, that's when my mom and I, we moved away, right? My mom got married, so we ended up moving. So I didn't really have as much of, you know, the church as part of my life then, but I never lost it. I always had that strong, strong belief. But one thing with me, though I had that strong belief always, and I always went to Christian camps every single summer. For me, I remember my grandma, she would always say when we pray, right, to pray in the name of Jesus, Allah. But for me, I never did that. It never felt right to me from a young age. So I'd always be like, in the name of God, in the name of God. I'd always go against what the church was teaching me to do because I instinctively had that in me at such a young age. It didn't make sense because I knew my teachings and my teachings contradicted the fact that Jesus could be God based on what I learned within the biblical teachings. Wow. Yeah. You had that natural inclination towards God. Wow. Strong foundation. And even when I was 14, you know, alhamdulillah, hardship happens. I was living on my own at 14 and I was very much struggling. And it's sad because in the Christian context, when you struggle, you're taught that God in a sense is mad at you. So I remember at 14, you know, being on my own, living on my own, struggling And just being in my bed and crying and being like, God, like, why are you doing this to me? So I think that was really also detrimental to me in the religion aspect, right? Saying that hardship at the age of 14, why would God put a child through all of that? But in Islam, we learn that there is good in hardship. There is blessing in hardship. There is wisdom. There is knowledge. Your sins are relieved. So that was a huge turning point for me, too, when I did learn about Islam. Mm, and also it can be a symbol of love because you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the amount of hardship he went through and it was all from the love of God. You know, we're taught that when God loves you, he wants to bring you closer to him and you're not brought closer to him by having all these amazing luxuries and partying. You're brought closer yeah. to him in those moments where you're just like on your knees and crying. That's yeah. when you're brought closer to him. So yeah, there's there's a lot of beauty in that, I agree. There is pure vulnerability. I absolutely agree with that. And you're absolutely right. All of the prophets, they all struggled immensely, right? And that that definitely gave me strength. When I learned that in Islam, and I understood that, you know, look at our prophets. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves our prophets that much, who am I to complain, you know? And now we look at the people of Gaza. Who are we to complain? SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Yeah, it's that shift in mindset from God is angry at me to God loves me. Exactly. It's a, it's a huge difference and it impacts your everything about your life. It does. You start to you start to love everything about your religion. You see the mercy, you see the baraka, you see the innocence, you see the fact that you can be vulnerable, you see that anything you go through, it's okay at the end of the day. That's mm. written, that's the qadr. There's again wisdom, knowledge lessons to be learned within all of it so Mm -hmm. alhamdulillah alhamdulillah for all the hardship I truly truly believe that with everything in me you know and one valuable lesson that I learned as a Muslim is if you are not happy with your situation or if someone hurts you and you're angry at that person ultimately you're actually still being angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that situation for you to be into so that lesson allowed me to let go a lot, but it allowed me to forgive people, right? Because forgiveness is so, so important, especially when we are healing. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wisdom behind everything. So if you're upset that you're in hardship or you're upset that someone did something to you, you're ultimately being upset with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of dealing with the situation, having patience, having sabr, making dua, yeah. right? That's yeah. true. That resentment hurts you, not the other person. And it's always yeah. important to remember that. You're just yeah. hurting yourself. You're not hurting the other person. They don't care. No, no, right? And if you forgive people and if you let go of things, then we're taught also that you will be rewarded, right? In Jannah for that. Definitely. The reward is immense. So why were you living on your own at 14? 
Well, it was just, it was life circumstances. You know, I went through quite a, you know, traumatic childhood. There was a lot of abuse and situations that happened. And I just knew at that point that I needed to step away from everything and I needed to just be on my own. But I also kind of had a little bit of that anger to life at that time too, right? I Like me against the world mentality. So I very much had that too, because I just felt like the cards that were dealt to me, especially being raised in the church and knowing, you know, why we go through hardship. It's because, you know, you're like, you did something wrong. God is making you suffer. So that was very, very hard for me. Um, Yeah. Sorry. Can you uh, bring me back to the question again there? (laughs) Yeah. So actually just more on that, I do want to know, like living on your own at 14, what did that do to you? What did that do to me? Well, it, it made me stronger. It made me grow into my own like individual person. It made me realize that there's two choices in life, right? I can either choose to make something of my life or I don't make something of my life. So that's ultimately I chose to, you know, make something of my life at the age of 14. But it, it was it was challenging. It was hard. But, you know, I'm so grateful for it because it literally made me who I am. And when you go through vulnerable situations, it makes you be able to help people as well. That's why I went into nursing because I, I seen vulnerability around me and I felt it. And knowing how to help people cope with that and get through that, because when you live through these situations at a young age, you learn how to cope very, very quickly and effectively. Mm. So it allowed me to help other people in this world. And now with Islam as my tool, when I talk to other Muslims, then I can help them also on the spiritual aspect of it too. Actually, I saw on your Instagram that you'd done some, you made a post and it was talking about how you went from like a selfish kind of uh, selfishness to like more of a selflessness. And you showed some like modeling pictures. Were you like in the modeling industry or was it just like... Yeah, no, I I was at 16. I started modeling and I I did a lot of I did a lot of commercial modeling because I'm shorter. Right. So I did a lot of commercial modeling. I enjoyed it. But the reality is, is there's there's a lot of pressure put into the modeling industry to look a certain way, to have a certain weight. I mean, even me at my small weight, I was like 100 and I think about 12 pounds and they still wanted me to lose weight when I was modeling yeah yeah so there is a lot that stigma that's attached to it that it's not really that great yeah no it's really not all that great that's just the reality of it it paid well it definitely paid my bills right but what I recommend young girls to really get into modeling not not really I really wouldn't because they put a lot of pressure on you and you're always trying to live up to this idolized image, which just is not realistic in today's society. So I definitely was more of that selfish person, but that selfishness developed from my childhood, right? Because I didn't have those protectors. I was my protector. So I had to be selfish, I felt like, with the world. And I very much was that way, right? Like I, I gave my heart to some people, but I really didn't give it to many people my acts as well. I wouldn't really consider people's feelings or emotions at times, even though I was a very considerate person, but I would just very much shut myself off. So that's kind of the best way I can describe my selfishness. And then you learn about Islam and you realize like selfishness does not live in Islam, right? It just doesn't. You you can't be like, to be a true believer, you have to want for yourself, you know, or you have to want for your brother what you want for yourself, vice versa. Like that's the way it is in Islam. So you have to completely let go of that selfishness and I'm sure in the UK I don't know but I know in Canada it's very much normal to be a selfish person here Mm. right like it's normal to be that way to kind of just look out for yourself not be overly considerate of others like that was kind of the society I was raised in you know fend for your own yeah and I think as well Islam teaches us that um, we live in a world where God a lot has made enough for everybody. Yeah. You don't need to fight for things. There's enough there. There are, yes, there are people starving. That's because we have the resources, but we're not giving them out correctly. Yeah. It's not that Allah hasn't made enough resources for the world to survive. It's that there are greedy people taking a lot of the resources and not um, handing them out. But we live in a world of abundance. There's enough for everybody. You don't need to tear someone down in order to get to the top. You don't need to say bad things about another person in order to win like you don't have to do any of that you can 
completely love and be kind to everyone and raise everyone up around you and not worry about it taking away from your bucket. I agree with that completely. Yeah, it's a mindset shift. Go for it. (laughs) You have your water. Mm -hmm. Do you want a drink? Are you good? I'm good. (laughs) You're good? Okay. So how did you discover Islam then? So I actually ended up learning about Islam through a person when I was 22 years old. And at this point, at 22, I had a horrific image of Islam. You know, I thought basically all Muslims were Arabs. I thought all Muslims were terrorists, even at that age of 22. So when I met this person, this person had like a very like softness to them, right? Very soft spoken, very sweet, um, very considerate, family values, just all of the things that I really wish that I had in my life and that, you know, I wish that I was raised around. Those were the values that I wish that I had and was raised around. So this person ended up telling me that within Islam, it's all the same prophets. And I was like, "Mm, okay, right, (laughs) all the same prophets. And then they proceed to tell me, yeah, and like the Quran, it's, you know, hasn't been changed in 1500 years. I was like, okay, like, that's cool. Why does that matter? (laughs) Like, that's my thought process, right? I'm still stuck on all the prophets are the same here. (laughs) Mm. So I end up going home and I start to research because I took world religion. I took world religion because I went to a Catholic high school. I took world religion in university and in college. And nowhere did it say that it was all the same prophets. All it said was that basically Muslims, they, um, their prophet is Prophet Muhammad, mm-hmm. and they pray to a black box. That's what I learned. So I go on the internet and I start Googling and I'm like, whoa, okay, hold on. Like it's literally all the same prophets. And then it resonated with me. It hasn't been changed in 1500 years. And I know that the Bible has been changed. I just, I knew that, right, as a, as a Christian. So then I was like, okay, this hasn't been changed in 1500 years. And that's where it really started. And then I just kept observing this person and observing the way they are, the way they interact, their character traits. And it made me start to really like the Muslim population so much more because I had never been around Muslims before. And I started to really dig into it. And that's literally where it all all kind of bloomed from. And the biggest, the biggest like wow factor to me was definitely when I heard the Arabic prayer for the first time. I just, I cried like a baby hysterically, like completely for a solid, I got to say 20 minutes. Like I'm not even joking. I'm getting teary yet. I got goosebumps over my entire body. And I was like, okay, but I don't understand even like one word of Arabic, how is this hitting me so hard? And at that point, it's like that right there just made me know that it was the truth, right? Mm-hmm. That made me know that it was the truth. So then I'd say that was probably maybe about six months into really starting to research into it. It took me six months to listen to the prayer, <laughs> but I listened to it. And then it was a solid like month of studying. And then I ended up taking my Shahada. So it, it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful experience. Alhamdulillah, it really was. Mashallah. Wow. But I still didn't really understand Islam. I got to be real with you. After I took my Shahada, you know, you think you know, but you really don't know much, especially when you're learning on your own because you don't have any guidance. You know, you don't have someone who really understands Islam thoroughly to guide you through that. So my process of really learning about Islam, I ended up getting married um, to my my son's uh, father. We ended up divorcing. It was a very hard divorce, alhamdulillah. And because of that divorce, that's when I started to really study into Islam. Why do we go through hardships? I started to learn about our Prophet Sallallahu life. I started to learn about all the Prophet's lives, not just the ones, you know, specifically that we know of very well, right? But starting from Adam to Prophet Shaykh and just continuing on through our prophets, mashallah. And it made me fall in love so, so, so much more with the religion. And it gave purpose to all of the pain, all of the hardship that I had from a very young age up until my divorce, right? It explained it all. It made it okay. And that is really my my story, And now, alhamdulillah, I am married. I was a single mom for about three and a half years, right? So, yeah, so it was hard. It's hard being a single mom. I was a registered practical nurse working almost full time. I was going to school for my registered nursing. 
I was working like literally 90 kilometers from my house at the time. So it was hard, right? Um, but I'm so grateful for it because it made me a strong person. And it makes you realize that you really truly are resilient no matter what comes your way. But then I met my husband now, mashallah, three and a half years after being a single mom. And he's Palestinian, mashallah, but he's he's religious and he understands the deen and he's kind and he's soft and he's patient and he's taught me so much. He has literally just like, now I truly feel like I understand what Islam truly is as a whole, as a core. What are we here for? What's our purpose? Alhamdulillah. But it is a learning journey. Like literally it took me, what, four years of being Muslim before I really started to understand it in about six and a half years before I truly had the whole big picture in, in front of me. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember what that moment was when you were going through your divorce where you decided, that's it, I need to learn more about this religion? It was literally right from the get-go. Like, I was I was just so sick, right? I was, I was sick for, like, three months. I was throwing up almost every day. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. Wow. It still makes me emotional because these are hard times to go through, right? Yes. And I needed... I needed that reliance on Allah more than I needed anything. So mm. it was right from the beginning. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Sorry, I'm all teary-eyed now. It's okay, go for it. <laughs> was it one of those moments where you feel like you tried everything and the last thing you tried was really just yeah. turning to God? Yeah, that's exactly it. You just, you throw your hands in the air. You're like, you know what? Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is, this is what you wrote for me. But, but I don't know why you wrote it for me. I need to understand. And that's why I started to research. Yeah. yeah, I went through a divorce as well. So, yeah, um, I and having a child, it's hard, man. Like being a mum, you have to stay strong. You do. Yeah. Like you just you you're resilient. Like at times you don't know where it comes from, but you just have to keep pushing forward, right? And yeah, I'm sorry you went through a divorce. Like I know it's never easy. Yeah, no. it's but alhamdulillah, I very much had that same thing of like on my knees like I'm just turning to you Allah like I don't know what to do yeah exactly exactly and and that's you know the irony is is you know in Islam we know that our deen fluctuates right it's high and it's low but literally your deen is at its highest when you're going through these hardships so Mm. there's so much blessing in it but people don't realize that it's it's as we know it's you know a test or a trial to test is it going to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is it going to bring you further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so how did your family react to you becoming Muslim my family they were not too too bad with it you know a lot of them thought that um I was possibly becoming a terrorist (laughs) which was not true (laughs) my dad thought I was going to marry someone and move uh, you know over to uh, Syria and uh, have an ISIS husband but I explained daddy no I promise I'm not I'm not becoming Muslim you know to be a quote-unquote terrorist so it took a little bit of convincing with him but then you know subhanallah you know he ended up really really opening up to Islam and becoming interested because he's seen all the good that came from me too right I go from being like a selfish daughter, right, to being this loving, considerate, constantly asking what his needs are, what, you know. So he saw that shift and he started to actually really open up to Islam because of that shift. Um, my mom, she she wasn't too bad with it initially. My grandmother, she thought that, you know, the devil had gotten me. That was it. When I put on the hijab too, sadly, my grandma didn't talk to me for, you know, quite a while two and a half years so that was a bit challenging because my grandma and I we are like best friends like when I was a single mom she used to come and help take care of my son so it was quite quite you know detrimental for me when I put on the hijab and I lost that communication with her for two and a half years but at the same time I also realized you know no one is going to be with it be with me on the day of judgment no one is going to be standing there before no one's going to be fighting my case that is only going to be me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is what gave me the strength to keep the hijab on at that time, literally. That is literally what continued to give me the strength because I'm not doing it for anyone. I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not doing it for the people. I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Mashallah. So yeah, that, that was my family's reaction. Um, my cousins, 
you know, that are pastors. I really didn't see them much at that time because they were living um, like a couple hours away. Um, and everyone still kind of has their own viewpoint on Islam. But I tried to bring positive light and continue to, you know, explain more. And my family, they are interested in hearing more and more, which is nice. Alhamdulillah. Shway, shway, as they say. <laughs> married to a Palestinian, mashallah. <laughs> wow. They're great people, seriously, mashallah. Palestinian people, really good people, mashallah. Yeah, you hit the jackpot marrying a Palestinian, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. So, so grateful. Because, you know, I know, I'm sure you know, it's not easy, right? It's not easy to find people with good intentions, pure intentions these days. Mm. Men that fear Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala put their wife first i don't know if you've experienced any of this if if you i don't know how long how long have you been divorced for a sister now like a year and a couple of months okay a year and three months That's maybe still, still fresh then yeah yeah i mean like Look, yeah yeah i don't know if you've looked but it's it's i mean i'm sorry to say but it's horrendous out there <laughs> It's a disaster. Brothers, brothers, do better. Come on. <laughs> Yalla. <laughs> yeah. I like, I hate to put it that way, but like, it's so, you're right. Like, you know, when you find a good person, like you, mm. you value that person, you keep that person, you respect that person. Right. And I think that's important too. Why, like before you get into a marriage, you guys both discuss, you know, what you want out of a marriage, but also what are the obligations of the husband and the wife, right? Yeah. In the sunnah, right? Yeah. So then that way there's barakah, there's blessings, and that respect and communication will always be maintained, awesome. inshallah. Definitely. Awesome. Well, you have had an amazing journey, mashallah, like a lot of ups and downs. There are definitely more questions I want to ask you, but the teacher is like at my door. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, so, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Make sure you check out Rebecca's Instagram. I'll link it in the... Um, in the comments and the descriptions, you guys can check that out, inshallah. Thank you guys for watching. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, everyone.